everybody welcome to michigan out of doors well we are here it's the tail end of the muzzleloader season and we are having a lot of fun in this cold weather we sure are jimmy we had jordan jimmy and i were all sharing a blind the last couple of days out here <laughs> frigid temperatures but we had a blast you won't want to miss the story that's right and we're also going to go to the northeast part the lower peninsula uh, and cover the elk season that just happened last week uh, some really cool footage up there you won't want to miss that and i think we're gonna have some time for some other stuff so lots of good stuff coming up i'm jimmy gretzinger and i'm jenny olson stay tuned it's time for michigan Michigan out of doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze, dancing on the pine forest floor. The autumn colors catch your eyes, here come the crystal winter skies. It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors. Someday our children all will see this is their finest legacy, the wonder and the love of Michigan as the wind comes whispering through the trees the sweet smell of nature's in the air from the great lakes to the quiet stream shining like a sportsman's dream it's a love of michigan we all share michigan out of doors is presented by by country smokehouse offering a variety of meat products country smokehouse is located three miles south of i-69 on m53 just south of imlay city Country Smokehouse is a meat processor, a butcher, and a destination for sportsmen. By KL Outdoor, a Muskegon manufacturer of sportsmen's outdoor products for over 30 years, featuring the terrain line of hard-sided hunting blinds designed for quick setup and removal with quiet operation. For more information on other products, kloutdoor.com. By G5 Outdoors, makers of the Quest and Prime Bows, Manufactured and designed in Memphis, Michigan, G5 offers archery bows, broadheads, and accessories on the web at g5outdoors.com. By Meyer, a destination for hunting, fishing, and camping supplies, offering hunting apparel and accessories as well as hunting and fishing licenses. Meyer has nearly everything you need to take on nature and get you there. Just a week or so back found me in one of my favorite places, Johannesburg, Michigan, the day before the December elk hunt. This place is filled with excitement and about 100 of the luckiest hunters in the entire state. This is always a special season to be sure. So for our elk regulations, we have multi-year cycles, so we try to stick with um, a quota for several years at a time. In past years, we had taken 100 elk total. So we'd have 50 elk in the early season, 50 in December. This year though, um, we've actually doubled the quota. So we're taking 200 animals um, this year. So we took 100 the first season, 100 now in December. So our quotas are reflected based on the population and our last survey had our estimate rate up around 1,300 elk, which is a little bit over what we're looking for. Um, so uh, we use hunting as a management tool. It's how we control how many elk we, are, we have and where they're located. And so we kind of respond with that quota um, and doubled it to 200 this year. So it'll stick to 200 again for 2017, and then we'll look at all those numbers again. We'd be joining Kevin Johnson, a local guide up this way, who just also happens to have his own show on the Sportsman's Channel, Big Boys Adventures. Kevin was letting us tag along with our camera today as well in hopes of getting some of his hunters' successful hunts. Scott Friedenstab and Pat Miller were the two bull hunters with us this opening morning. Uh, my cousin Jeff Kresnock from uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan gave me his tag. Gave you his tag? A yeah. pure Michigan tag, right? Pure Michigan tag, yep. Well, what do you get a guy like that for Christmas? I don't know, something good, I guess. <laughs> so we're, what did you think, you know, we're hour or two into the hunt so far. What, uh, what was your anticipation going into this hunt? What were you thinking? Oh, I'm very excited. Very yeah. excited. Have you ever hunted elk before? Yeah, with Jeff 20 years ago. Oh, really? Yep. Okay. All right. Well, good luck today. Thank you very much. Pat, how'd you get your tag? How many years have you been putting in? Well, since 84. Since 84. <laughs> yeah. 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 So what do you think so far? Well, it's kind of rough for a 64-year-old, but uh, I'm keeping up. But yeah, it's a, we just cut some sign up there and found a nice uh, rub up there. But uh, you know they're big animals they move quick so yeah we'll get them now what so what went through your mind when you got that uh how did you find out actually well i went online checked the results and pulled up put my driver's license in and it said congratulations and i read it again <laughs> and i said no and i read it again and i thought well it's got to be for a cow it's a bull tag so i started calling called my older brother 
and uh, he uh, he was all excited and told my sons and then told everybody else I knew and everybody told me to go buy a lottery ticket you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's uh it's exciting it's a once in a lifetime hunt you know it's uh and stay right here in Michigan is great you know Kevin what's the plan of attack here young man well uh, we are going in to some fields here on some state ground um, just try to see what's going on we've got uh, good snow we've been on a couple uh, bowls this morning another one just now but um, the wind hasn't been cooperating mm -hmm. and the second one the uh, the bowl went into real thick stuff and we know he'll come back to a clear cut so there's no sense in pushing him in okay. uh, that he won't come back so. does the snow make it better or worse for hunting uh, it makes it it makes it better as long as you don't get too much mm. so it doesn't limit our <laughs> limit our vehicles so our first real excitement of the day was late afternoon when we came over a rise to find a group of nine bulls crossing the road now, as luck would have it we had permission on one side of the road and not the other so we went to that landowner on the property where the elk were headed and we did end up getting permission to chase this group of elk so with the elk not too far from us we started to get into position now, chasing elk is not like chasing whitetail when you spook a deer, he tends to run quite a ways. When hunting elk, they usually will run over the hill or into the next woodlot and hold up. So we were pretty sure we could get around on this nice group of bulls. However, as luck would have it, we did see them but never got a clean shot. Now, not too far away from us, Jordan Brown was with Tristan Cole and his daughter May, who were actually sitting most of the day in a ground blind in an area that holds quite a few elk. May had a cow tag in hand and was waiting for the elk to pass by. Well, that last light, the patient crew in the blind had one big lone cow step out with just enough light to get the job done. May had done a great job, made a really good shot, and the guys were feeling pretty good as they followed up on this nice cow elk. Even though we all dream of the big Michigan bull, I have to say that these cow hunts are once in a lifetime and are a ton of fun for all involved. Well, there was pretty much nothing till very at the last minute we saw cow elk come right out. We got our, my gun up situated and I pulled it, I went right up the leg and went a little forward to the back and I pulled the trigger and it went off running. And you so. felt pretty good about the shot right away, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, you did a great job. Great job. Adeline's 12 years old. And what else have you harvested this year? I got a 214 pound black bear. Yep. It was a boar. Yep. And last year, what'd you shoot? Uh, eight and a half beard turkey yep. and a nine point buck yep so this completes your uh, michigan slam and you're 12 years old yep <laughs> so proud of my daughter got three girls and they're all hunters they all go out and uh, may was lucky enough to receive a transfer tag in the uh, michigan uh, elk hunt for the december hunt and uh, just a fantastic experience i uh, can't uh, thank uh, brian styles enough for sitting with us this evening and Kevin Johnson and everybody else that worked so hard. All the guides worked really hard to get hunters uh, elk for the Michigan season. And the great guys we were sitting with as well. It's uh, just fantastic. What a great hunt to end the day. Day two started right in the mix again with a great setup that just didn't quite pan out on our first setup of the day. Well, our foolproof plan uh, ended up not being foolproof. We had some two really big bulls uh, in a field this morning. Went in there, cut their tracks. We found where they were bedded. <clears throat> Never did lay eyes on those critters. And now we're, as you can see behind me, we're reconnoitering. Um, and uh, we got some other elk right, right in this general area. So we're gonna go after them. This elk hunt in Northern Michigan is not a slam dunk. I mean, you gotta really work at it sometimes. And even though this is only day two, and these guys, it's a nine day season. So they're gonna hunt for nine days. We're, this is our last day here with cameras, at least our cameras. So hopefully Kevin and his crew can get some stuff if we don't get one uh, on the ground today. But Jason Elk in Northern Michigan, it's pretty hard to beat. 
About mid-morning, the day made a turn. We ran across a group of what had to be about 40 elk. With bulls and cows mixed in, well, we had two groups of hunters, and we were trying to come at these bulls on two sides in hopes that one of the crew, if not both crews, would have the bulls in range. With some barns in the background, the hunter I was with, Scott, didn't really have much of a shot. And by the time the groups got away and clear, the shot was a little too far, and on the elk, well, they were a little too close together. However, just to our south, Pat was getting into position, and as the herd left the side of the field that we were in, they started to move towards him. The question now was not if Pat would be close enough for a shot, but would he have a clean look at a bull with no cows behind it? It's hard to explain just how exciting this 10 minutes of action really was. It looked like the biggest and last elk in the herd was the bull that Pat was looking for. Well, the guys could see that the bull was hit. We didn't really know where, but most of the crew felt pretty good about the shot. There definitely was some tense moments trying to see just where Pat had hit the bull or if he had hit it at all. So after a bit, the guys started to track the bull, and sure enough, there was some decent blood. But with being such a big animal, they can really go a long way. So after a few hours, the guys were able to find Pat's once-in-a-lifetime monster Michigan bull. I do. Up down there. Straight through there. There's something that looks like a big body. Every year we try to get to this part of the state to chase these incredible animals. It's a different hunt to be sure. You can sit and wait them out, you can drive and then spot and stalk, you can walk all day and follow fresh tracks. However you choose, the elk hunt in Michigan is a very special thing that many of us well, will only watch on TV or hear about from a buddy. But I would encourage you to maybe find your way to Gaylord or Atlanta next year during this hunt. Head to the check station or wait downtown at the elk pole in Atlanta. Seeing these big animals is worth the drive. And hey, any excuse to be in this part of the state, well, it's a good one. Thanks to the hunters and Kevin Johnson for letting us tag along. What a great couple of days in the big woods of northern Michigan. Well, we're here uh, towards the end of the first week of the muzzleloader season, and we are down here in Nashville, Michigan. Uh, a good friend of ours, Jeff Hines, is letting us hunt his property. He's not here. He is sitting on a beach in Hawaii. So I kind of wish we were there with him, but we are here on his property. We're looking to fill some doe tags. There's a couple of big bucks running around. This hasn't been hunted, Jeff said, in about a month. So we're going to give it a go tonight. Uh, I think Jenny and I uh, are going to sit in the same blind, which we I don't know if we've ever done that. Um, or we may split up. We're going to get out on the property, kind of look around a little bit, make a call. Um, it's been snowing all day. It's just letting up a little bit. I would think the deer got to be moving. It's really cold. It uh, hasn't been this cold yet this year, so we're hoping for good things. We'll see what happens. Well, we have high hopes right now. This land looks amazing, and we've seen a lot of deer tracks in the snow just on our way in here. Um, I don't know what we'll see here tonight, but we're, we're just having a blast already. All three of us in the same blind. I don't know that that's ever happened, so it's just kind of fun. If nothing else, we're having fun just <laughs> sitting. <laughs> well, what happened next is the equivalent of a solar eclipse. Jimmy Gretzinger actually passed on a deer with antlers. Jordan and I were pretty surprised to hear him say he was gonna let this buck walk, but we still had plenty of daylight left. Once I realized Jimmy was planning to shoot a bigger buck or any doe, I kind of wondered why he even invited me along on this hunt. Well, I don't know what kind of luck I've got, but I can shoot just about anything except those deer that just walked out. There were, I think there was two fawn, two doe fawns, which is fine to take, but if it was a full-size mature doe, I was going to take her. And that buck was, if he had four on a side, he'd be a legal buck for my restricted tag, but he was awful small, he was only a little five point, and I don't think they would probably like us to shoot a deer like that here on this property this late in the season. So that's some bad luck, but the deer are moving. We got about half hour left to shoot light. So hopefully we'll get something either bigger or a little bit more mature on the doe side to walk in. But that was fun. 
And sure enough, just a few minutes later, three does stepped out in the field. Now it was just a matter of waiting for the biggest one of the group to offer a good clear shot for Jimmy and his muzzle loader. Get ready in case you get spooky here. He's acting a little funky. I'd take her the next chance you get. I don't see any other deer. I just, I hope she's not getting her wind. It's right above. I need to take her front on. Yep, just, just be ready. They're getting nervous. If she goes broadside and the fawns aren't close, I'd take her even close. I need to take, take her right now. She's pretty close to that fawn. They're smelling us. Yep, they're getting nervous. Should I take her in between those two? That looks a little questionable. Just need one fawn. Okay, I'd take her. Well, I was right on her front shoulder. Felt pretty good. We we had her pretty almost broadside, but then they were getting a little hinky there. They were our winds kind of blowing right to them, so it wasn't an ideal shot. But they were pretty close. I had a real good look at her shoulder, so hopefully, uh, didn't go very far. We'll go check it out. That's a nice big doe. I think I heard it smack her. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, there she is. She's right there. I tell you what, that was <laughs> one of the more cra thanks. That's one of the more crazy track jobs. I I wasn't sure I hit her because there was just there was only a couple specks of blood, but she was dragging a leg. I know that angle wasn't great, but it kind of went in that front shoulder. Uh, typically, that can be a pretty good good shot, but and it was. She maybe went I don't know a little over 100 yards, but very little blood yeah, i mean it's good starting grief to snow again we were just thinking well let's just leave this lay it was kind of dragging a leg we kind of see her track kind of knew where she was going anyways but all right <laughs> awesome let's see what we got it's a meat for the freezer i tell you that yes Woo, I see where you shot her. beautiful big doe <laughs> Nice big mature doe. That's what we're looking for. Yep, put it right in that front shoulder. That ended up being a pretty good shot, about a 75 yard shot. A little nervous on the track job, I have to tell you, but here she is. We passed up that couple uh, fawns that came in and then that little buck. I'm not one that likes to pass bucks. In fact, Jordan was like, this thing's going down. And I was like, ah. it just was so small. It was a little five point and we're just really looking for meat. We're looking for me, we might as well take a big doe. And uh, our patience was rewarded. Good, good looking deer here. Yeah, we can warm our hands up and uh, do a gut job. Yeah, <laughs> nice big head on her. Well, thanks guys for coming along. I, I guess you're up next, Jenny. <laughs> All right, gladly. Well, the next morning's hunt didn't end up offering any shot opportunities for me, but our time together was a success. To be a part of Jimmy's hunt was a fun time with lots of laughs. Thanks again to Jeff Hines for giving us a place to make it all happen. All right, well, we are here once again at Antlers Fireside Grill Canadian Lakes with Jim Wood, and we are doing this time of year. Hopefully everybody got their buck or their doe or whatever, and you've got some venison in the freezer. We are doing backstrap again on this week's show because why not? I mean, it's just the best thing that there is. So, Jim, what are we doing here today? We're going to do a seared venison loin, and we're going to finish it in the oven, and we're going to actually encrust it with pistachios. Ooh. And then we're going to finish it with a blueberry and red wine sauce. Oh. Okay, so how do we start this whole process? First, we're going to get our pan going here. Okay. Pretty high heat. Add some vegetable oil here. Now, when you're searing something like this, and I know we're going to finish in the oven, any tips on searing something like this? How do you know when this is ready? Is it going to be smoky coming up off of that? Well, or? first, when you put the oil in the pan, yep. if you let it heat up for a little while, you're going to see it's super you know, loose. Okay. And then when you start to see smoke coming off the pan, it's ready to go. that's when it's ready to go. And when you're cooking, when you're searing at such high temperatures, mm -hmm. salt is about the only thing you really want to put on it. Okay. Because, like I've said in the past, black pepper will burn. Uh, pepper in general will burn because of the high oil content. Okay. That's but a any good of your tip. dried herbs, they're going to burn also, and they're okay. going to give you a pretty unpleasant flavor. Now, afterwards, if you want to throw some fresh thyme or some black pepper on it, that's, okay. that's fine. Okay. So you've got the sear on the one side, sear on the other side. We're going to go ahead, turn the heat off. Now we're going to start to do our encrusting. Okay. So. 
Got our venison here. Now this is Dijon mustard. This is a great mustard to use with this. It's uh, Dijon mustard is pretty spicy, mm -hmm. but you've got the sweetness from the sauce. It's going to kind of balance everything out. Okay. All right. So you're going to take your mustard. And the whole point of the mustard, along with the spiciness, is to get the pistachios to stick to the meat. Hmm. So you got venison, you've got the mustard, pistachio, and there's going to be blueberry on top of that. Blueberry sauce. Yep. Holy cow. That's a lot going on. There is. Next, take your pistachios and encrust the venison. Then finish it off in the oven. Shake. Okay, Jim, we just got the venison out of the oven. We've got it finished here. And so how do we finish off with the sauce? Well, from the residual goodness that was left in the pan from yes. the searing of the venison, yep. we're going to deglaze it with uh, some red wine. And whenever I use red wine in cooking, I always use Pinot Noir. Okay. It's just a lot more subtle than, say, uh, Cabernet, once it cooks down anyway. Mm. So that's what I like to use. I noticed that bottle's half gone. It is. Um, we took a break in between <laughs> airings. Not true. I'm just giving you our time. All right. How do we get going here? So we're going to deglaze this here. So once that wine reduces down, you're basically looking for almost a syrup. Okay. Trying to get rid of a lot of that, that booze, that alcohol taste. Okay. Once you get to that stage, a little that. Once this reduces a little bit more, then we're going to add our blueberries. Now, okay. these are blueberry preserves we have here, okay. which these ones are just store-bought, but I'm sure a lot of the viewers probably make preserves and jams and jellies. You don't have to use blueberry. I okay. mean, you can use any berry from Michigan that you want. Hmm. I mean, it's strawberries, raspberries, black raspberries, which are my fav favorite. Okay. Great to use also. Add your blueberries, a little butter, and salt, and let the sauce reduce. Then it's ready to plate. You know, a quarter to a half inch thick is fine. Yeah. Pistachio encrusted seared venison loin with red wine and blueberry sauce. Thanks for joining us this week for Michigan Out of Doors. Make sure you join us over the next couple of weeks. We'll be doing our traditional end of the year wrap up. We'll show you our year in review and we'll all be picking our favorite stories from 2016 to share with you again. That's right. It's hard to believe we're coming to the end of the season and really from all of us here at Michigan Out of Doors Television, we just want to wish you a very Merry Christmas. Hopefully you get to spend some good time with friends and family. Remember the real reason for the season. And hey, if we don't see you in the woods or on the water, hopefully we'll see you right back here next week for Michigan Out of Doors.
Michigan Out of Doors is presented by by Showspan, producing consumer shows including the Ultimate Fishing Show Detroit, January 12th through 15th at Novi's Suburban Collection Showplace. The show features fishing tackle, trips, boats, and seminars on all Michigan game fish. The Ultimate Fishing Show, Novi, January 12th through 15th. By Jay's Sporting Goods with locations in Clare and Gaylord. Jay's, serving the Michigan outdoor enthusiast since 1971 with a wide variety of outdoor products. The gear, the knowledge, the tradition of Jays on the web at jayssportinggoods.com. By the Michigan chapters of Safari Club International. For over 40 years, SCI has been protecting hunters' rights and promoting wildlife conservation here in Michigan and around the world. SCI chapter locations can be found on the web at firstformichigan.org. By Greenstone Farm Credit Services, making recreational land ownership possible across Michigan and northeast Wisconsin. Begin your land financing journey at one of Greenstone's 37 locations or visit greenstonefcs.com. Closed captioning is provided by Marvo Mineral, makers of Lucky Buck. Deer management products including minerals to supplement deer diets year-round to improve health and antler growth. When I want a far away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads to my home state. I am a Michigan man. Changing seasons paint the scene like rainbow trout in a hidden stream. The white-tailed deer in the tall pine trees. I am a Michigan man. I am, I am a Michigan man. Ask where I'm from and I'll show you my hands. Lord above, I love this land. I am a Michigan man. From the Keweenaw down to St. George. 